Hi, my name is Angel Gonzalez. I'm a junior here at Whittier College, and I am double majoring in environmental science and Spanish. Um, throughout high school, I was never that kid that got the perfect straight A's or had a full schedule of AP classes. But yet, I did my best, and I gave my 100 whatever I did. I did have some AP classes, and I did some get good grades. But I was always, I was that student counselors fail to see, just because they and focus a lot in the students that already know what they're doing. The AP students know what they're doing. That's why they're in that, those classes. Rather than focusing on the kids like myself and other, other friends of mine that were in the same boat, you know, we're a little lost. We don't know what our options are. We don't know there's a difference between community college and Cal States and UCs. And I feel a big part of what can change and help us get here to college where I am it goes back to high school. Having more programs in we, which encourage us and act as a support system for us to continue the college application workshops, financial aid workshops, and all this goes back to we need more funding, more counselors at our schools, more programs that would expand our horizons, let us know all the opportunities that are out there, you know, all the resources that are out there. And I, I think that's a big part of what we need for us to be where we are right now. Okay, my name is Danae Crespo. I am double majoring in sociology and Spanish. My parents are from Nayarit, Mexico, and I grew up in a family with a single mother. Um, going to school was very important. Every single day my mom would make us and push us and, and encourage us to go to school. And just <clears throat> succeeding in life is very important in our family. I have a younger sister, so I, I am her role model. And she is also doing very good academically. And we just stay united. And What do you think, when you, t when you think about education, what are the challenges that Latinos face? Well, just overall being a minority because not a lot of us Latinos pursue higher education since we're so uni we're so tightly knit with our family that when we do graduate high school, most of us have to go work instead of just pursuing and going to college. So, I mean, I was privileged and my mom supports me and I get loans and stuff like that. And that's just <clears throat> problems that we have to... If I could send a message, it would be just to have more funding for school so that more Latinos could just continue their education and just come to college and become successful in the future. And Hello, my name is Ever Romero Rincon. I am a junior here in Woodard College. My major is business and Spanish with a possible minor in biology. And I'm from West Covina, California. Tell me a little bit about your educational experience. My, edu my educational experience, I take it very serious. Um, to me, I think ignorance is more expensive than education. So even though we're paying a lot for mm -hmm. our education right now, it's going to be worth it in, in the long run. Are you a first-generation college student? I am. I'm a first-generation college mm -hmm. student. What, is, what have been some of the challenges for you? Some of the challenges uh, have been the money. Um, I currently have a lot of loans, but I'm working with that. That's been okay. Um, the challenges are a lot of first-year experiences. Um, I, For example, while studying abroad, um, I didn't know anything about that until uh, last year. Um, and also just like the support from family. Sometimes they don't understand what we're doing. And, um, and overall, <coughs> for Latinos, what do you think are some of the challenges that they face in succeeding in education? Some of the challenges could be um, the money. Uh, a lot of some, some of them are undocumented. Um, motivation and the uh, support. And what do you think that uh, the Department of Education, particularly <coughs> task force can do to help Latinos um, reach, you know, university and college? Um, they could keep doing what a lot of them are doing right now, which is reaching out, giving scholarships, um, coming to your schools, uh, high schools, middle schools, even college, um, giving out scholarships, support mentorship programs, and um, meetings, informational meetings. Okay. Hi, my name is Marta Ortiz, and I am um, currently a freshman at Whittier College. Um, I come from San Marcos, California, um, in the San, San Diego County area. Um, currently, my major is, well, I'm double majoring, political science and English with a minor in history. And I want to become a lawyer, hopefully, in the future. Um, my educational experience has been um, very supportive, but usually by my mom. My dad is somewhat supportive. He doesn't really, he didn't really want me to go to college, mostly, but um, he's not... Um, against it specifically. He is supportive in a way that he um, provides for me and he um, pushes me, but 
not to the level that I would want him to be. So I definitely was enrolled in a lot of support systems when I was in high school, like Upper Bound and um, AVID throughout my four years of high school and even middle school for AVID. And that's basically where I received most, most of my support. And my mom was a great support because she was the one that pushed me to be into those educational programs and also followed me to those, um, those workshops that those um, support systems provided and um, the meetings and all those other things. So, yeah. Um, if I can send a message to President Obama would be, um, since I have experience with the Upper Brown program and I really do think that Upper Brown and the TRIO programs do work, um, I would really strongly um, support not cutting the amount of Upper Brown programs in the United States because I am aware that currently because of the, the money here in the recession that there's going to be many cuts of the upper bone programs and that the upper pro pro program that I was in and I was fortunately I was able to finish it it might get cut and I would really push for them not to get cut and for them to receive more funding as well as other upper bone programs across the United States. Hi my name is Melissa Camarena I am a sophomore at Whittier College and I'm from Bell Gardens California. And what's your major? Um, I'm a business major with a minor in Spanish. Uh, my experience at Whittier College has been great. Um, I'm able to connect very well with people. I found a very good group of people that I am able to um, connect very well with, and especially like some of the organizational groups on campus, such as Mecha and Amigos and Amigos that I am a part of. Um, they really helped me out um, throughout my first year of college, and they've been able to help me out ever since. And when it comes to education, what do you think are some of the major challenges that Latinos face? Um, I believe that them not having um, citizenship um, really does affect a lot of Latinos. I personally know of a few students that were unable to go to colleges, great colleges, UCLA, UCI, um, a lot of other ones that because of the fact that they weren't U.S. citizens, they had to turn it down because they didn't have enough money to pay for it. Hi, my name is Stephanie Carmona. I am a sophomore at Whittier College, and I am a double major with Spanish and child development. And tell me a little bit about your educational background. Well, for elementary, I studied at, in Los Angeles through high, the beginning of high school. And then for my first year as a freshman in high school, I moved to um, Visalia, California. So I studied over there until I graduated from high school. And then I came here to Whittier College. And how, how has your Whittier College experience been? Um, it has been really good. I really love the... Um, connection and how available the professors are to us I never really had that and that's something I was looking for um, here like at in the school because I just felt that I needed that because in high school I mean I did pretty good but I still feel like I wasn't as prepared I sh as I should have been for college it's a big a huge impact speaking of that when it comes to education what are some of the major challenges that Latinos face Okay, uh, for me personally, coming from a Latino family, um, my parents didn't go to college or school. Their education is very limited. Um, and me being the oldest of my family, I had to pretty much explore everything on my own. If I needed help, I couldn't always ask my parents for help because English is not their like dominant language. And um, I would say that's one of the biggest problems I think that Latino students face um, at home because they don't really have that um, help available unless like when they're in school in high school you have your teachers and professors but other than that it's really hard to ask your family for help. And if you could send a message to the president to the White House on what they should be doing to help Latinos uh, do better in education what would that be? Okay my message would be that there are many kids that, uh, to them, education is not important, or at least they don't see the importance of it. Um, I think those are the kids that we have to aim for. Um, we should build more programs to help them to um, explore maybe what their interests and see what they like, um, and just see that there's more opportunities for them. My name is Cristina Alcaraz. I am 
doing the Whittier Scholars Program here at Whittier College, and I'm integrating social work, political science, and education. Um, well, I went to high school here in Los Angeles, which is part of the Los Angeles Unified School District. Um, I wouldn't call it the best performing high school, but I did gain a lot of experience and like social skills from it, from being part of extracurricular activities. But education-wise, I could say that I was not prepared well enough for college. And what has been your experience at Whittier so far? Um, at Whittier, it's been good. Um, I've, it took me a while to transition into the college student life, but um, as of now, um, my sophomore year, I feel that I've been doing a lot better with managing my time and um, I've gotten used to the workload a lot more. And is there something in particular that has helped you kind of get used to college life here at Whittier? Um, I could say that after joining a club my second semester, I did feel that I was able to find people that I could relate to. Um, I guess I could say specifically like finding a Latino that was from Los Angeles from like similar kind of school that I went to. Um, I felt that I wasn't alone. I thought that I wasn't like cut out to make it here once I was here a semester just because I found it really difficult. But um, yeah, just finding someone I could relate to and um, my resources have helped me a lot more. And your personal experience, what are some of the challenges Latinos face when trying to achieve success in education? Um, personally, I would, from experience, I would just say my high school education that I feel that well, I talked to my old high school teachers and they say that we were robbed of an education just because I come here and I meet students that went to college prep high schools. And like that's not the focus in my high school. The focus in my high school is um, like test scores and things like that, not SATs or college readiness. So yeah, I say, um, I think that for those of us Latinos who come from those kind of schools, we, like, speaking for myself, we lack that preparation needed for college. So my name is Humberto Jasso. I am from the class of 2014 here at Woody College, and I am a freshman. What's your major? My major is, I'm gonna, I want to major in um, English and Spanish, and I want to do something with special education because I want to be a teacher. And you're the first in your family to go to college? I am the first generation to come to college here. Um, it's a struggle right now because um, even though I got financial aid and I got scholarships, I still have to take out loans and I'm still, I have two jobs and I am a full-time student. So it's really difficult for me to, it's a lot of time management and it's balancing out, um, balancing out my schoolwork with, with uh, my work. And I definitely set my priorities first, which is- I'm Jessica Martin, I'm a freshman at Whittier College. My intended major right now is Spanish, and I want to take other classes to see what else interests me. Um, I'm leaning toward gender studies, or maybe a minor in English or child what development. What has been your experience so far at Whittier College? So far at Whittier College, um, Whittier College was my first choice because it's not only close to my home and my family, but also it's a private um, liberal arts college, which was something I was really interested in, and I wanted a small community. So, um, so far coming here, I've met a lot of people, people usually or mostly from um, the Culture Center, which is where I work, and the Spanish lab, I'm a Spanish tutor. So I interact a lot with um, Hispanics, and do you think that that helps you in a way settle into college? Has that helped you just acclimate yourself to the college life? It really has because they need, they're older classmen or they've been here a year already and they kind of help me get involved in the community and they tell me about different events and uh, meetings on part of Mecha also. And that has really helped me, you know, get involved in the college since it's new and it's a new experience for me. From your experience, and maybe even your family, you could talk a little bit about that. What are some of the challenges that you see that Latino fa Latinos face in having success in education? Well, de I think definitely it's financial problems. Um, I know that if I didn't get enough help, like financially, I wouldn't have been able to come to Whittier College. Um, I would have probably gone to a community or a Cal State, which is a lot less expensive than a private
save it. But definitely it's the money for some families and where it's just since we're like kind of mostly the working class. Our parents are always working and we rarely, well I rarely got to see my dad at home but he was always like that supportive person like go to college, I'm doing this, I'm earning money so you can get a better education. Hi, my name is Janice Ontiveros. I'm a senior at Whittier College this year. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I'm a double major in business and theater. So Janice, tell me a little bit about your personal educational experience. Um, coming from Albuquerque, New Mexico, I am not a first generation American, but a big motivator for me to go to college and do well is my father. He comes from Chambarino, New Mexico, which is in southern New Mexico. Um, my great-great-great-grandparents are immigrants from Mexico, and they started a farm there in Chambarino. Um, and he worked to carry that farm on through generations. And as a kid, he picked cotton every summer, 12 hours a day, and he worked really hard. He was the oldest of six brothers and sisters, and um, he earned his master's degree from UCLA to come from such a small town doing such hard, intensive labor where no one really leaves that town um, and to go from, from being there all the way to UCLA, he set an example for me, uh, one that I'm thankful and lucky to have. And so I've followed in his footsteps in the same way. He went to UCLA having never been to California, never visiting the campus. I came to Whittier College having never been to L.A., uh, never seen Whittier College, and the first day I saw it was the day I moved in. Um, and so, in that sense, I've had a great role model to carry on that um, sort of success. Why do you think it's important, why do you think this initiative to emphasize Hispanics in education um, by the White House, why do you think it's important? I think. This is a really important initiative. Um, my father had three daughters. I'm one of them. I have two older sisters. All three of us, I have six months left, but all three of us will have bachelor's degrees. We're the only ones. All of my cousins barely graduated high school. Um, some of them are in the military now. No one's going to college. And if they did, they dropped out. Uh, luckily, like I said, we had my father to be a great role model, but not everybody has that. So this initiative will help those who need that extra push and motivation. I think education about culture and multiculturalism in schools is very important. Here at Whittier College, I'm the former president of the Hispanic Student Association, the organizational co-chair of Minority Caucus, and I've received the leadership award from Alianza de los Amigos. I'm somebody who's very involved in this topic here at one of the mo most diverse liberal arts colleges in the country, and I can say that my background has been unique. Um, growing up, I went to schools where I truly was a minority. I, my skin color didn't fit in, my hair color, my eye color. I wished when I was nine and ten years old that I had straight blonde hair and blue eyes and that added extra stress on me. I felt like I was always trying to catch up with the people who I wished I looked like. And I think if somebody had approached me when I was young and said, it's okay to embrace your culture, and it took me a really long time, and it wasn't until I came to Whittier College that I really embraced the fact that I'm an ethnic person. I am I am Irish, you might not be able to tell, but I'm Filipino, and I'm Mexican-American, and I'm Native American, and I wish there had been somebody to teach me that embracing that is okay from a young age, and that would have given me more confidence in school. Hi, I'm Cedric Batetta. I'm a business administration major. I'm a junior here at Whittier College. I'm from New Jersey. And Tell me a little bit about your personal educational history. Well, I'm from an inner city, so the education I received was not so great at all. But my parents always, always pushed me to go further and to do well in school. And I did as best as I could with the resources I had, and that's about it. 
What was it like coming to Whittier College? It was a little, uh, a little weird because I've never been around so many uh, Caucasian people, to, to be honest. And I don't know, it was just different. It was a big shock. I wasn't used to it. In your perspective, what are some of the challenges that Latino face in achieving success in education? Well, some of the challenges I think is that most of us come from we're not really we're not really wealthy, so we don't have resources that wealthy people would have. So we don't have great education. Um, we probably experience more personal problems at home in terms of money and whatever whatever other personal problems we may have. So it's a little more difficult for us to strive and to succeed when a lot of our a lot of our personal problems almost overcome a lot of like overcome like, like I don't know, spin it. Like instead of thinking about education we tend to think more about the problems going on inside like our homes or whatever. How has it been for you being kinda of far away from your family? Um of course I get homesick but it's it's actually, I believe, this experience going to college here has helped me a lot, like, to grow as a person, to be more well-rounded, and just to know what's going on around the world, and to know, and it actually makes me want to succeed in life. To Hi, be my name school. is Donna Orozco. I am a senior at Whittier College. Um, I'm a Latin American Studies major um, with a minor in Spanish. My, I'm the oldest in my family, and my parents have always stressed going to college, always being on top of, on top of everything, schoolwork especially. Um, I, be I personally believe that school is their number one priority. Getting an education is very important. And what do you think, you're from you know, just your personal experience, maybe your family's experience, what do you think are some of the major challenges facing Latinos right now? Um, first of all, a lot of Latinos are not, do not have documents, so it's very hard for them to get financial aid. Um, going to school is very hard. Finding a job so that they can financially support themselves in, and going to school is really hard. Um, but overall, um, I think Latinos have been, they face a struggle with, um, there's not enough representation in higher levels, like in, in, in Congress, in politics. You don't see a lot of Latinos. So I think it's harder to, I guess, um, connect with other people and say like, oh, I can do that as well. Hi everyone, I am Damaris Devon. I am a freshman at Whittier College. My goal from at Whittier College is to actually get a good education, make my four years worthwhile. So, you know, when I graduate on stage, I can prove to everyone, and not just my family members, but prove to everyone that I made it, that I can do this, you know, and so can anyone else. I would like to do a double major in English and biology because I like to read books and for biology I like you know animals so I would like to you know work with animals or be a screenwriter after college so yeah my advice to any student who wants to go to college is to you know be prepared um, you know do well in high school, get good grades. Good grades means, you know, a lot of free money to, you know, for college. Um, take advantage of advanced placement, you know, courses because those can really get, give you a head start when you start college. Hi, I'm Charlotte Borst. I'm Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the Faculty here at Whittier College. I'm also a professor of history. And can you tell me when we're talking about um, the state of Latinos in higher education, uh, what do you think are some of the challenges that, that students face currently? I'd say nationally, Latino students face issues that many groups who have not been traditionally represented in American higher education face. And it's not necessarily low income versus higher income because I think we cannot conflate all Latino students together. But it is a sense of being in a place that may not have welcomed them in the past and finding a niche in schools that had been traditionally only open to those uh, who were white or who were of more, uh, who were of better financial means. And the, the 
challenge, I think, now is to have a place that is welcoming, that understands cultural differences and cultural similarities, and that has faculty and staff that are also Latino. And how do you think Whittier College is addressing some of these challenges that you just mentioned? First of all, Whittier is a uh, Hispanic-serving institution, which makes it a little bit different than some of the other national schools I was referring to in sort of a, a broader scope. Whittier has a, addressed these. We now have at least 30% of our students are Latino. I think about one-third or more of our faculty are faculty of color. The vast majority of those are also Latino. It's a virtuous circle, after all. If you have people who look like you, you want to come there. And that's the same thing for faculty as for students. And we create an atmosphere where we celebrate differences. I think one of the important issues I would want to address is to ensure that we have discussions on campus, not only that encompass race, after all, I don't think we have solved yet in America what it means to be, of, to be white or people of color. And as a historian, that's something I study. So I'm interested in that process. But more, I think, a process in light of the current debates that are around the country is, what does it mean to be an American? Whom do we include in that larger group? And how do we provide opportunities for all Americans in the great American tradition that we have had of being able to make it on your own. Really, people have not made it on their own. They've made it as part of a community. And therefore, really one of the important things for us is to create a community where everybody has a chance.